Dante. And hey, I'm Dana. And welcome to the Dante Show. your boy Kwame, the man with the plan behind the stands. Before we get into it, do me a favor. If you are on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or whatever, hit that share button so people can see what the fuss is all about. Don't worry if it's the end of the show. They can catch the replay. We're trying to spread the love instead of spreading the lies, y'all. All right, let's get into it. Did you know that our boy Dante Morrison is a best-selling author? Do you like smut? Yes, smut. Well, these books are filled with it. Check out The End of the Rainbow, followed by the sequel, Yesterday Clarified. You can get them on Amazon, or if you are tired of giving Jeff Bezos the time of day, you can visit www.dantemorrison.com, where, in fact, you will find out more about the motivational, inspirational, hilarious host known as Dante, Mr. Morrison, if you're nasty. He is not only the host of TDS, he is a public health advocate, motivational speaker, and community change agent. Articles, interviews, blogs, podcasts, vlogs, and more. You name it, and Dante has done it. Speaking of vlogs, have you subscribed to the Dante Show YouTube? Now every villager should be subscribed. The more the channel grows, the bigger TDS messaging becomes. It's really simple. Go to www.youtube.com forward slash Dante Morrison. And also, did you want to be a guest on the Dante show or do you want to book Dante or Dana on your platform? Stop. Don't inbox him. Don't email him or even call him. You know what you need to do? Go ahead and open your handy dandy smartphone or Wi-Fi enabled device and send an email to info at pyromedianetwork.com and request your presence on the show. It's 2021, y'all, and Dante and Dana has got management. So, let's conduct business. Speaking of management, the Dante Show is produced by Pyro Media Network. We are a Black-owned digital marketing and video production agency helping businesses and brands make an impact with their message. We also help businesses navigate what we call the biggest communication shift in over 500 years, social media. So, if you have a business, brand, or influence, and you want to take it to the next level, contact us today. All right, y'all. Thank you for joining us tonight, and we hope to see you on the next. Boom. What's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? What's up? Let's get into it. It is Tuesday night, April 20th, 420. Y'all know what that is for some of y'all out there. So sit back, take your talk, and watch the Dante show. I am Dante Morrison, along with my partner in crime, the phenomenal. I'll let him say it. Hey, what's up, ladies? Oh, my God. We got another night to view all of this loveliness, myself. And ladies, ladies, scream for Dante. All right. Hey, they love two, me. Two brown skin ninjas about to do the thing. Let's go. What's up, D Rock? You like smut? You like smut, dear? Oh, thank you, D Rock. Thank you. I'm blushing. You like smut? I got smut for you. My books are full of smut, smut on top of smut. They're smut-tastic, you know? <laughs> so tonight's show is going to be phenomenal. We got a great guest um, tonight. My boy Kevin is here, and he's going to just help us to just better understand how to just ramp up, you know, life. Um, but we're going to talk about social media, how to just make your social media platform bigger and better, plus how to navigate through all the anxieties brought on 
overwhelmed by social media. And some of us do have that. We get frustrated by social media. We feel unloved by social media. What's up, Camila? Camila, I shouted out your waffle dogs to my neighbor. And he was like, hey, when the truck going to come down our street? And I'm like, yo, let me see if I can make that happen. Yo, Shazzy, I'm not with the 420 either, but I support anybody that loves to be zen and calm and in their own space. <laughs> so listen, today was a great day for the black community. We're going to get into that a little bit later. But you know how we do. We are black every day, all day, 365. And we love to pay homage to our black influencers, our black leaders, and our black icons. And today is no different. Hey, Ty East, hope the Ty squad is here. Ty East is here. Listen, listen, listen. So we're going to give a shout out to another black icon. So let's hit it. Kwame, let's go. What up, Daryl? Black History Month ain't over. We know it ain't February, but today we're going to honor Martin Delaney. Here we go. Martin Delaney was an African-American abolitionist, physician, and editor in the pre-Civil War period. His espousal of black nationalism and racial pride anticipated expressions of such views a century, a century, a century, a century later. <laughs> At 19, while studying um, nights at an African-American church. He worked days in Pittsburgh and embarking on a course of militant opposition to slavery. He became involved in several racial improvement groups. Under the tutelage of two sym sympathetic physicians, he achieved competence as a doctor's assistant, as well as in dental care, working in this capacity in the South and Southwest. Delaney started a weekly newspaper called The Mystery, which publicized grievances of blacks in the United States and also championed women's rights. The paper won an excellent reputation and its articles were often reprinted in the white press. Delaney decided to pursue formal medical studies. He was one of the first blacks to be admitted to Harvard Medical School and became a leading Pittsburgh physician. In protest against oppressive conditions in the United States, Delaney moved um, in 1856 to Canada, where he continued his medical practice. At the beginning of the Civil War in 1861, he returned to the United States and helped recruit troops for the famous 54th Massachusetts Volunteers, for which he served as a surgeon. You got that? A black surgeon, y'all. In 1874, Delaney ran unsuccessfully for lieutenant governor as an independent Republican in South Carolina. He was the author of The Condition, Elevation, Immigration, and Destiny of the Colored People of the United States Politically Considered. He died in 1885. Listen, Village, give a great big round of applause and shout out to a black icon, Martin Delaney. Dr. Martin Delaney. Boom, boom, boom. We cannot forget about our history. We cannot forget about those that paved a way for us. We cannot forget about those who fought against insurmountable forms of oppression to achieve their goals. All right, Martin Delaney, you are our legend for the day. All right. All right, so let's move real quick into our pop culture spotlight. Pop culture spotlight, you guys all grew up watching Family Matters, right? I'm sure you did. Well, something from Family Matters came about, which called Jaleel White. <laughs> so on today, Jaleel White, Jaleel White launched his own cannabis brand called Purple called Purple. So if you go to the website Purple, you will see Jaleel White has started his own cannabis brand. Now, y'all know a lot of um, rich folks are getting into the cannabis industry, especially in California where it is legal and it is a money maker. So Jaleel White started his own um, cannabis company on today and he has a, a strand that's called Purple Urkel. Purple Urkel. So you can go to Purple and you will see he got a, a waffle iron too that makes customized Urkel waffles and stuff like that. But if you are into cannabis and you want to try some gourmet cannab cannabis, check out Purple um, owned by Jaleel White. All right, here we go. All right, so y'all know what happens after our Black History Spotlight and our pop culture. That's when your boy right here disappears and my partner in crime takes over because it's time for the what? The Dana, Dana drop. Dana drop. Boom. Boom.
What's going on, beautiful people? I pray that everyone is in good spirits and good health during this time. Um, go ahead and mosey on over to uh, youtube.com uh, backslash the Dante Morrison and follow our show. Subscribe. We need you all over there to subscribe. That's www.youtube.com backslash Dante Morrison and subscribe. Today, I'm going to read something and then I'll tell you it's from. And my Dana drop is going to be real short and sweet today because I'm full of emotions, but I'm going to read this because it's really profound. Today is a day of hope. Let us rejoice, not a day of arrival, not a day of achievement of a long awaited goal, but it is a, but it is a day of hope. Let us rejoice a major step the journey to el elusive justice, but a day of hope. Let us rejoice. Today, the justice journey began anew in the slow but significant trek toward realization, pushed by faith. Justice began to roll a long, slow rolling journey down the hill of inequity to the, to the valley of joy after receiving prophetic marching orders. Roll down like waters in the path of righteousness, forgetting the way like an ever flowing stream. It is a day of hope and response to generational echoes down the corridors of time. How long, Lord, how long? It is a day of ordained it is a day of hope ordained and made by God before the foundation of the world. A day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Not too long, but let us rejoice. Not as though the journey is over, but today let us rejoice. We have more mountains to climb and more battles to wage. More victories yet to be won, but today let us rejoice in it. Those are the words of the great Bishop Kenneth Ulmer. And I'm going to read this passage of scripture. It is Amos 5, 24. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness, like an ever flowing stream. Justice was truly served today. And let us be rejoice and be glad in it. It's not over, but this is a start. The doors are opening slowly, but one day they're going to be wide open. That's the Dana drop, and I'm out. Peace. Good drop, fam. Good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. You can't forget about your homie, dog. Man, I'm, I, I, you know what? I'm so, <laughs> you can't. I'm so caught up right now, man. I, man, I, I, no, I, we go, we gonna get into that. We definitely gonna get into that. But today is a day. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, yo, I'm happy. And I don't even want to get too caught up. So you know what? We're going to get ready for our guest on tonight. All right. So listen, village, 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 village. Are y'all out there where you at? Make some noise, get some shout outs, get some hollers, say we here, yada, 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 all that kind of stuff. Village, village, village. So tonight's guest, all right, is Kevin Dwayne. Kevin Dwayne is a Los Angeles bred writer, comedian, photographer, and host of the Kevin Dwayne podcast. Now living in New York City, Kevin highlights many topics, including relationships, culture, and entertainment. The Kevin Dwayne Podcast is now, right now, available on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. And Kevin can be found on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Listen, follow Kevin. Trust me, follow him on Instagram. You'll be inspired, motivated, and encouraged every single day, all right? So without further ado... Village, help us welcome to the Dante Show for his very first time, my friend, Kevin Dwayne. Hey. 
What's up, what up, what up, what up, what up? What's going on? I'm excited to be here. I'm like, oh, we're bio. glad to have you, man. We're glad to have you. Welcome to the Dante Show. Welcome to the village. Everybody is here. We ready for this conversation. But before we go any further, you heard the Dana drop. And of course, that was in connection with the phenomenal news we heard on today. You know, long overdue, long awaited. And for those that may not have seen it, let's let's take let's take some time to recap. You know what happened today and just get our hearts filled again. Kwame, make it happen. Members of the jury, I will now read the verdicts as they will appear in the permanent records of the 4th Judicial District. State of Minnesota, County of Hennepin, District Court, 4th Judicial District. State of Minnesota Plaintiff versus Derek Michael Chauvin, Defendant. Verdict, Count 1. Court File Number 27, CR 20-12646. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to Count 1, unintentional second-degree murder while committing a felony, find the defendant guilty. This verdict agreed to this 20th day of April, 2021 at 1.44 p.m. Signed juror four person, juror number 19. Same caption, verdict count two. We the jury in the above entitled matter as to count two, third degree murder perpetrating an eminently dangerous act, find the defendant guilty. This verdict agreed to this 20th day of April, 2021 at 1.45 p.m. Signed by jury four person, juror number 19. Same caption, verdict count three. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count three, second degree manslaughter, culpable negligence, creating an unreasonable risk, find the defendant guilty. This verdict agreed to this 20th day of April, 2021 at 1.45 p.m. Jury four person, 019. You can stop it right there, Kwame. Listen, Kevin. What went through your head and your spirit? Shut them eyes was moving. The eyes was just... <laughs> Those eyes said, I'm white. What? Right. <laughs> I know they not sending me to jail for real. It's like, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> but honestly, um, it's a it's a moment of breathing. And mm -hmm. was I was talking to multiple people afterwards because it was like, oh, wait, there was a slight tinge of guilt because of what we're used to in America. So there was a part of me that was ready for disappointment. You know, right. just always like, I want this, but we know how things go. So right. part of me was kind of hiding my eyes and being like, I'm ready for the fallout. But mm -hmm. when it happened, I felt guilty for not believing. It was weird. It was a weird kind of like, <laughs> You know, because I'm like, I'm not used to this. Right, and like, right. And I'll, I'll three counts too? Oh, right. you know, right. so right. I'm still trying to like, okay, so let's get to the sentencing now because they give him two months in the Sprite can, I'll be over it. So, but exactly. I'm happy. Small, small feet, but big feet. Right. What happened? How about you, Dana? How'd you feel when you saw it? I kind of felt like Kevin. I didn't know what to expect um, because we've been duped so many times in our judicial system. Um, but yeah, he was moving his eyes like, what? I'm yeah, white. Yeah. I am I'm a cop. Cool. I am white. I'm a cop. So um yeah, I, I think I I'm just waiting to see what the because it's not over. Because like right. Kevin said, it could be, yeah, we found him guilty, but it's only gonna be two months and and and, and some ginger ale and some, you know, something. Right. So Bird. we we don't know. Um if he does get sentenced, is he, you know. He's not gonna, you know, be he. He's gonna have to be secluded and all, all that. It's just, it's just so many things. I mean, I don't care, right? But yeah. it's just so many things that will factor. You know, we don't know what the judge and you know the secret societies and secret communities and all of that. If the judge may get threatened, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. It, anything plays a big part in America, and this is right. a big. This is a big case, and I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if some higher power steps in and you know makes the call. But then you know, it, well, had the former good. president been in office, it would have been a whole different thing. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But but I will say that that I get what y'all are saying, but right now I'm so relishing in the moment, you know, that he was found guilty. 
you know, by by a jury. They was like, yo, I don't care. And it was a quick turnaround. Yes. So it was quick. So I'm like, I know that the sentencing part is going to come. We all on edge about that. But just in the moment of knowing that right now, the man who murdered George Floyd is in jail and is going to be in jail for at least eight more weeks, you know, before the sentencing happens. And we don't know what's going to happen while he's in jail, but he is in jail right now. You know, so I think that's the part that got me. And I was I was at work. And when I saw it, I was like, I ain't going to put this man in jail. Like Kevin said, it ain't going to happen. I'm bracing myself. I'm like, I, I got to drive home past Crenshaw and King. They about to tear that corner up and all that. And what it said, what they said guilty, I felt just like like he did. Like, what? Are we really going to send this, <laughs> this, this white cop to jail? But you're right, Kevin, seeing his eyes and his look of... I know y'all not finna really put me to jail for killing this black dude. Yeah, you know, we discussed in the back. We just had something in the back. You done changed it up on me up here. Right, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, so y'all, hey, I mean, this is a day that we need to celebrate. I mean, we need to celebrate today. And this is really one of those be in the moment type situations because we don't know what the sentencing is going to be. We don't know what's going to be said. But in this moment right now, I think the black community is truly exhaling, you know, and I went on Twitter and I saw all a lot of white people talking about he didn't get a fair trial. How does a fair trial look for someone that <laughs> killed someone on videotape? The whole world saw it. What? What is? What? How does fair a fair trial look? But what do they mean? He didn't get a fair trial what? because it was in it was in the city, and it was it was just it, you know how they will reach. And, 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 and that's what I'm just that's that takes me back to my point, which is saying, you know, I'm sure they're gonna appeal. The appeal's gonna win. It's just so many. I think they just passive. Part of me believes that they're pacifying us right now. And then when they appeal it, they're gonna, you know, appeal and go to trial again. Dana, I, Dana, you just you just read a whole scripture about. Oh, I know. I'm optimistic. <laughs> I'm optimistic. I know. I'm, I, I don't care if they use him to be the the token. You you finna be the token for every other police officer that yeah. killed a black person. Yeah. I don't care. And now I think that's just how crooked folks think. Like we gotta send one of them, so you're yeah. just gonna be that guy. So. You know, sorry, you're the Lee Harvey Oswald in this case. Take it for the team. Yep. Yeah. You it's know, about so, accountability. It's about yeah. accountability. Like the tide has to shift. And so if it's going to shift with him, so be it. Because we have so many other examples where we didn't get this justice. So right, right. so be it, whatever it gets. Right. Right. And so, this is with footage. This is with exactly. footage that we all saw. Yeah, footage. We <laughs> had the Rodney King footage too, but this is a different era. Right. You know? <laughs> but right, but right. D Rock said, let's stay positive and believe that justice will be served. Right now, we can say justice was served. Right. You know, he's in jail. So we're yep. going to stay positive. We're we going to keep it that way. So, Kevin, welcome to the show, man. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Thank you. So, yo, Thank dog. You. So, we're going to talk about, you know, just social media. You are an influencer. Your stuff goes viral. You got oh, like. Wow. Like, you know, quadruple the followers that I got, you know, but we're going to talk about it. So who are you? Who am I? Um, I'm Kevin. That's the best way I can put it. I am literally a gay boy who just grew up and was like, okay, I'm gonna do all the stuff I've been doing in my room for everybody else. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> and I'm just, I'm somebody who's just passionate about bringing joy I mean that. I like I like to entertain. I like to make people laugh. I like to dance. Um, and I like to have meaningful conversations. But I'd like to do it on my own terms as well. Right. And um, so the whole thing about being an influencer, I just had to lean into that. Because for a while, I was just, you know, one of the, the guys online. Like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And then kind of overnight, things started kind of happening. And once you reach that, like, 10,000 point, then all of a sudden you're an influencer and it's really weird yeah. now every DM is about sales opportunities or something like where you're like, Oh, this is, Oh, I am an influencer. Okay. That's cool. Um, but I'm honestly me and I try my best to be exactly who I am in real life online. I love that. And, and that takes a lot of courage to be quite honest. Yeah. Um, because I think it's easier <laughs> for you now, but I think we look at, when we look at social media, a lot of people don't know how to be their authentic self. They're constantly framing stuff to please other people. 
you know, and, and I know that one of our um, talking points was how do we be creative, you know, in a time of social media when folks have such short attention spans? I mean, think about Vines. Well, Vines were like, what, five seconds, 15 seconds? Six seconds. Yeah. How do you entertain the world in six sex seconds? And folks are being creative. Now we got TikTok, which is another level of creativity, you know, mm-hmm. plus we got Instagram. You know, Facebook is the older generation, you know. So when it comes to your content, um, even your podcast and all that, how do you tap into your creative side without losing your own authenticity? Um, well, I had to learn to not cater to an audience before catering to myself. Um, I learned that from well, experience. And then Gary Vaynerchuk talks about how there's people who jump into social media thinking, I just want followers. I just want people to come in. And what happens is now you're a puppet because you're doing whatever you think is going to bring people in versus doing what you're passionate about. He says, instead, you should focus on having a small audience and doing whatever it is you want because your tribe will find you. Mm. And it's true. Like me, okay. I'm, as you probably know, Dante, I'm a 90s music boy. I love 90s right. music. Yeah. I love early 2000s music. And so that's what I dance to every day. My goal every day when I make videos is to find a, a song that was popular, but people will still forget about it. And so when you hear you like, oh, my God, I forgot about this song. Right, right, and that's right. become my niche. It's like what I'm always like a DJ. It's like okay. what song was big, but people it's been so long. Is gonna bring it to me, and that's my thing because I that's the way I take in music. It's like I press shuffle, and I'm like, Oh my god, I love this song! And I'm like, Okay, how do I bring that to social media? It's easy for me, it's because it's what I do, but then also when I'm not feeling it, I don't do it. And I think there's this pressure when you get a certain amount of followers, you get a certain amount of views and likes to keep it going. It's like you got to yeah. stay in that consistency, right, right. yeah, yeah, and yeah. consistency is important, but it'll drive you crazy if you let it overwork you. And I think that's the thing. <laughs> D-Rock, you're, you're silly. I came to dance and that's it. Real that's players it. Real, I, that's say, it. I, I actually say that every day. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> I, well, I say that too. People in my DMs talking about everything but my dancing. I'd be like, I right. can't a dance for y'all. That's, that's it. That's, I'm not going to join your party. I'm not. No, that's it. That's it. So, so Kevin, I mean, when, when we talk about, so you you found your niche. Yeah. You know, and God. there's a lot of creatives that watch the Dante show. That's like, well, I want to get out there and and live courageous and live open, live free, and just do that. Clearly, you you were not born you know, with this level of confidence. No. Did something happen to just flip it? Oh, uh, I think it's life in general. I mean, you know, growing up uh, uh, LGBT and then uh, my early 20s was all about people pleasing. I did the, mm-hmm. oh, I want to play it safe. I want to do this. And then I went far to the left. I mean, I'm naked. I'm doing everything else. I'm like, well, this is too much. And then, <laughs> then I had to like recalibrate and find myself in the center. And then um, I had a big kind of spiritual awakening in the last year, too. And it kind of tapped into the power that I had that I wasn't tapping into, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's like we all have power that we don't we're unaware of it. And I think once you're aware of you're like, oh, wait, I can control a lot of things. I can't control everything, but there's a lot of stuff that I can control. Mm -hmm. And it's a matter of getting out of your mind. Like I would talk myself out of things like I used to. I always loved dancing, but I never wanted mm-hmm. to dance in front of people because I always had the imposter syndrome. Like, oh no, I'm not good enough. I can't do this, you know? And then shot in the dark, I do a video online. It goes really well. I'm like, oh, okay, but I'm not doing it every day still. Mm-hmm. I wait another month. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's do another one. Oh, that mm-hmm. one did good too. Okay, let's switch it down to two weeks. <laughs> okay, that did well too. And now as you, I'm damn near doing one every day, which it's crazy for me. That's high productivity for me. For me to do something every day is right. only because my passion is passionate for me. As soon as that passion's gone, it'll go right back to where it was. But because it's coming naturally now, it works. But I had to get comfortable with it. I had to be comfortable with doing some dances that might be too feminine for hoteps or doing some dances that are because t- you know, people are very weird. Like online communities are very, very weird. And that's right. another thing too. It's if you focus on the negativity, cause you know, comment sections are trash. I mean, it's like bubonic plague sometimes. And so you have to get into that space of like, listen, I'm doing this for me. I'm here to fulfill a purpose. I'm here to bring joy and I'm here to love myself. And once you do that, 
everything else kind of falls in line because you're not so much focused on pleasing the masses. And what happens is you bring the community that's attracted to you. And that is amazing yeah, that you yeah. would say that because you're a phenomenal dancer. Thank you. And as, good, <laughs> as good as you dance, I just assumed that you were just this person that was looking for the right stage to be on because right. you dance like you are auditioning to open <laughs> in living color. I mean, you dance like Rosie Perez at the beginning of Do the Right Thing. You can dance. Yeah. Thank you. Well, honestly, what's happening is I feel like I'm reclaiming my time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, you know, we, we all have a, a finite amount of time on this earth you mm -hmm. know, in this life. And these, our bodies fall apart, you know? And so I'm like, listen, I didn't take full advantage right. in my younger years. So while I still got these knees are still dropping, they still, they still working. They're not quite making knees, but they, right, they, do, right, what they right. do what they need to do. I'm going to wear them out. I'm going to do what I can now. And that's why I keep challenging myself. That's why I keep doing these routines that are hard as hell, because I'm like, it's me challenging myself. It's me getting that childhood dream out. It's me getting that the early 20s dream out when I was afraid. It's like, well, I'm not afraid anymore. So let's just do it now. And it's actually more fun because it's on my own terms. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just it's just me. And I love that social media. This is the, the plus side. I love that we have platforms now like TikTok and Reels that allow you to use copyrighted music without the without all the beef and all that stuff. Because now I could just pick any song I want and then make it like a music video. And and I like I said, I'm a 90, I'm a 90s boy. So music videos right. are like my thing. So just putting it together and editing it, that's my zone. I that's my favorite part is like putting all the footage together and then piecing it and like, oh, we'll make this cool. Oh, I should change the outfit here. Oh, I should do this. And it's like just, the Drew Hill one would tell I'm, me. When I tell you, and I did that before going to brunch. It, I I literally was showering <laughs> and I said <laughs> I'm going to do this really quick. And while getting dressed, I just threw the do-rag on and was like, yeah. okay, I'm going to do Cisco's part first and I'm going to do everybody else real quick. And then I was editing it on my way to the subway and I literally wow. posted it just before walking in the restaurant and I just left it alone. And I came back. I was like, oh, that did really well. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a last, that was just last minute content. And right. that's what I love is when I, it just comes with, I love stuff like that, where it's like no pressure. I've been doing YouTube and stuff since like 2009. And back then I used to force content and it wasn't good to me. It was just like, mm -hmm. I would just, I would try to talk about what I thought. It wasn't wanted. authentic. It wasn't. I didn't care. Yeah. I was like, I don't care about none of this stuff. I'm not Wendy Williams. I'm not, I don't care about pop culture like that, but I wouldn't mind being someone who's just, dancing or doing comedy videos that's my my niche but i had to get out of my own way and say okay this is what i'm comfortable with doing and it's not that because you did i do recall you you were doing comedy videos for a while mm -hmm. like which your i love videos yeah and your therapy yeah. ones are hilarious you're on the couch and you're the therapist and those are those are, it's hilarious so would you would you do this if you weren't going viral or getting all the likes yes i mean the the viral likes came after just doing it to lackluster, lackluster um, response. And honestly, the pandemic brought the creativity out of me again. What happened? I'm, I did it years ago. I used to make little, little videos on Vine and Instagram. Then life happened. Imposter syndrome happens. You get lost in nine to five and you just kind of, mm -hmm. you know, I lost my confidence along the way. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of let it fall to the wayside. And of course, there's always people who are like, hey, how come you don't do the videos no more? And I'm right. like, oh, I'm not in that space anymore, you know, blah, blah. And I just kind of let life happen. And then the pandemic hit. And so now I'm at home. And then I'm like, that's only so much TV I can watch before I'm just like, okay, I'm bored. You know, I done worked out. I done post right. every thirst trap known to man. I'm like, there's only so many ways I can be naked. So <laughs> what else? This is a real conversation. There's only so many ways. Right. Show right. Button, oh you know? I, I'm out of angles. <laughs> I'm out of angles. And I'm like, I don't want this to be my legacy now. So I'm like, all right. So maybe, <laughs> so maybe I should start being creative again. And then it just kind right. of flowed. And then I was getting ideas. And what happens is when you're in that zone, it's like the ideas just come to you. And it's a very, I think it's a spiritual thing. I really do. Because it's just like, sometimes you're blocked. And then sometimes it seems like it's just back to back to back to back to back. And it's, it's right. amazing. So right. that's I what got me to here. All right, y'all. So listen, this is this is Kevin. We gonna, I'm sorry, we got to do a quick commercial real quick, you know, and then we're going to come back with part two. Dana going to jump in, ask his questions, you know. So Kwame, 
Hey, we with you. Boom. Go ahead. So if you're just now tuning in, we're here my boy Kevin Dwayne all the way from New York. He's been talking about just his journey to becoming a social influencer unintentionally through his, his dance, his podcast, his videos, all that kind of stuff. So yo, check it out. If you're just now tuning in, make sure to follow Kevin on his YouTube page, Facebook page, um, Instagram page. Also follow the Dante show on YouTube, youtube.com backslash Dante Morrison. Make sure to like and subscribe, like, and subscribe. Help us to go viral. Help us to get our numbers all the way up. We want to be liked. We want to be popular like Kevin. We want to yes. do that. Do a stitch with me, Dante. <laughs> You can do a stitch. <laughs> Take one of my videos, do a stitch. Dance next to one right, of my videos. Right, listen, I'll repost it. I'll repost it. <laughs> all right, then you was going to ask something, David? Yeah. Has anyone ever like you know, from your videos and things being that you're in New York and stuff like that, has anyone ever approached you as far as going into acting, um, starting maybe your own, um, what is that called? Um, I can't think of the name of it. One man shows and stuff like that. You know, no, no one's approached me about it, but I feel like it's something that I'm kind of building on my own, if that makes sense, because uh -huh. we're in we're in that state of social media where you have platforms like Patreon, you have platforms where you are able to create create your own brand and do your own thing. And I would love for someone to approach me for that because that's something I would love to do. And I do believe that I do believe that one day it will happen. It's just one of those inklings. It's like something's coming from this. It just, you know, you have that feeling. It's like something's gonna happen because it's just things just keep lining up in ways. I'm like, wow, I didn't expect that to happen. And so it hasn't happened yet, but I do think there's purpose in me being in New York with right, right. time. And it's just, it's one of those things like, how do I get here? I'm from LA, you know? Right, and right. then I lived, I lived in Atlanta. How did I get to New York? Like, you right. know, how did, how did I even get here? And then how did I tap into this passion now? Something that I, that I buried inside of me. So I do think that it'll eventually happen. I am getting more like, more like marketing PR type people. And uh -huh. then I am getting more like kind of brand ambassador type stuff. Like, hey, you want to wear our product for the, you know, stuff like that. So that's a sign of things to come. But I do think that'll eventually happen, though. So the, the stage is being set. I love this, it. Yeah, you, you, you're setting it straight. And then D-Rock asked, um, what was your only fan's handle? <laughs> well, it, it, it never came, it never came out. I just I just I I I wanted to get one. I was close. I was close. But, but Jesus, about that much. No, Jesus just came and said, but before you do that, let me <laughs> I was close. I was I was I was in mesh. And you know, and just before I spread the cheeks, it just Jesus said, "No." Oh, nah, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Kevin, I wanna I wanna now switch reels. We talked about the Instagram and, and the dancing and all that, but you also have a podcast. Yes, you know, and and you you do a lot of conversations. And I I was really inspired by you when you opened about about your spiritual journey, mm -hmm. you know, and about the changes that occurred in your life in 2020, because it is not often that we see individuals just really be transparent about what they're going through spiritually. Yeah. You know, and I thought that was so important and it was so eye opening. So um, does, did, did that create a, you know, what did that do for what you shared on Instagram? What did it do for how you engage people that, that whole mental, mental space? Well, it's funny because it it did more than I thought it was. So I grew up Christian and then I walked away from Christianity in like 2013. I was like, yeah, no, this isn't for me. Mm -hmm. 
And then last year I was going through a series of different things that were eye-opening for me. Like I was reconnecting to family that I hadn't talked to in a while. And then all of a sudden it's just like, you know, the third eye opened, I was seeing things from a different perspective. And then I just had this, this spiritual kind of awakening where I was like, okay, I want to, I want to try this again. And so I jumped back into Christianity full throttle. My, I read the entire Bible in four months, like the full throttle. I was just, let's oh. go. Well, the, I, it's a part of my obsessive. Right. Uh, was, it's a part of my, part, it's okay. part of my personality. You'll see it in my videos and everything. Like I'm very, things are done to a T. So yeah. <laughs> and so I read in four months, but then even in that, I thought that my journey was going to be what it was before, but okay. God was like, no, I'm trying to get you through this wilderness and get you uh -huh. to the other side. And so you can see your power. Okay. And so on the other end of it, I tapped into my power and that's when everything started happening with Instagram and the videos and the ideas. It was like, I had to tap into that side of myself to really get things done. It was like, I was lacking because I wasn't tapping into the God in me. And mm -hmm. so, that's what happened and that changed everything for me because it made me see the things i could control got it got it yeah. got it yeah got it and then i mean thinking about what we all went through in 2020 you know it was it was life changing for mm -hmm. for a lot of people um do you think you would have would have had that experience had the world been open and things been moving forward like normal Honestly, I don't know, but I, I can say I probably wouldn't have. And I'll tell you why. I work, I'm a flight attendant regularly. Okay. And so all that being on the go, it, it's so hard to even <laughs> process things when you're in and out of hotels and countries. It's just like, it's just a different life. And you're so busy with everything else. It's just chaotic. And so okay. just to, to have to be literally be sat down. <laughs> like in the right, world, right. it's right. like I had nothing but to to confront my thoughts because in that time is when I came back to LA and talked to my sister and she and I hadn't talked for a while. Like it had been a minute, and I finally saw something from her perspective that I'd never saw before, and it made me break down and say, "Wait a minute, who am I though? Who am I that I've ignored your pain and not been able to see it until now?" And then that kind of broke me, and it made me kind of dig into my core values and you know what how I was appearing as a person. And then I started kind of going through my own like therapy and, and then it just led me right. It just took me through all the childhood stuff and brought me right back. So it was a very crazy year, but it made, it took me to a new chapter in my life. It really did. Right. And I don't think any of that would have happened if I was just steadily working like normal. Right. Well, see, that's the thing. And I say this a lot <clears throat> on our show. If you go back and look at some of our shows, I say that the pandemic was not, it wasn't just a uh, tragedy per se, or it wasn't bad for everyone. Um, God slowed it down. He, 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 he set everybody down. He, he shut stuff down and he did this stuff so that you can focus on what he has you to focus on. And a lot of people didn't tap into that, that last, last year, a lot of people missed the boat. A yeah. lot of people miss what was really going on and what happened. Granted, you know, we did have some tragedies and some people had things. But at the end of the day, when you go on and come in and you're doing this and you're working your nine to five and you're doing this, it's hard for you to focus on what you want to do as far as your business, as far as something you want to create, something that you want to have, because you got to pay your bills. You got to do these. Th you got to do all of this life stuff. Yeah. But here's an opportunity for you to sit down, think about it, what you want to do, have that conversation with your sister. Um, and look what happened. Yeah. You were able to tap into places where you wouldn't be able to tap into because you over in France somewhere chilling, you know, <laughs> it's, walking. Not a bad thing. I mean, it's not bad. Yeah, it certainly is. I got a story. Okay. Right. <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, absolutely. And I honestly think the same thing when it comes to like the George Floyd st situation. I think the impact was made because a lot of people were actually at home and they they all we all were on yeah. our phones. We all yeah. were tapped in. And because of yeah. that, people had no choice. They couldn't ignore it. Right. It was in their face. And I think that prompted the change that led us to today. I agree. If the pandemic didn't happen, this would be a different story. I of think course. it's of that course. everybody down and made them really look at people, first of all, look outside themselves because a mm -hmm. lot of us we're so busy. We only we think that we're the only player in the game, and it's like right. no, there's other 
And I, I truly do believe that we're all connected. And it's like, you right. gotta look outside yourself to learn more about yourself. And, and so yeah. last year it made people really look outside. I think that's what led us to today. And it was very important. And I loved how you said it made everybody, like everybody. I don't care who you are or where you were at, you were at home. Mm-hmm. And if you had your TV on, you saw it. So it, it was, we were all, we were all at home when it happened. Cause it was at the height of everything. So it was just, you saw it. Listen, and, I, I talked and, to so many damn white people last year. I didn't know how you didn't yeah. know. How, how did, did you not know? know? I'm like, I'm not, know? talk to your cousins. I don't like, girl, you right. ain't telling me nothing. I don't already know. Right. Yeah. Willful <laughs> ignorance. Willful right, ignorance. Right, 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 right. Kevin, I want to go back to a question that was asked and we were talking about social media and you were yeah. talking about, um, you know, getting DMs to promo people and all that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. we have a lot of entrepreneurs on the thread and they're probably they're getting hit up as well. So Camila Jacks, if you guys don't know, Camila Jacks is Camila Jacks is the owner of Hey Batter Batter. Yummy, hey, batter, batter. If you have not had a waffle dog. Woo! Listen, these waffle dogs are amazing. Check out our past episode featuring Camila and Hey Batter Batter. But the question was, how do you Uh, decipher the legitimacy of the DMs for promos? Uh, For me, I look at the whole setup because like my thing is I love supporting black businesses. That's my Mm -hmm. thing because I'm a black business. So you got to keep that cycle going. Right. And uh, what I do is when people reach out to me, I always hit that bio first. And I'm going to look at how it's set up. If it looks tacky and a bunch of emojis, I'm already over it. But also, do you have an actual website there? I'm going to look at that website. I'm going to I'm gonna breeze through it. You, you know when something's fishy, period. You, you just know when something's fishy. I look at what their social media looks like. I look like for professionalism. And then ultimately, from that point forward, then I'll engage in conversation. A lot of times, you can rule them out before you even get there. Cause a lot of people just want to draw the little cartoons for you. I'm like, no, I don't want a cartoon. Just please leave me alone. You know, we're good. I don't want right. nothing that deals with cash app and flipping. No, leave me alone. Bitcoin people. No, leave me alone. I'm good. Um, but every now and then, like I had a jewelry line reach out to me like, Hey, we, we love your videos. We love your content. I would love to send you some of our stuff in exchange for a shout out. You know, that's another thing okay. you shouldn't have to pay to Poor promote shot. people's stuff because people will try you. They're like, well, I'll give yeah. you a discount. Right, like, right. You came to my DM. <laughs> yeah, I was fine. I didn't know I, you existed. I didn't need your product, you know, but yeah. what happens is people will be like, hey, well, if I'll send you something. And then if you, you know, for an exchange of you promoing, and I'm like, okay, if it's good. I always tell people, I'm like, I'll do it if it's good. I was like, I'm not promoting any product that I haven't tried for myself because this is, if I'm an influencer, I'm not right. going to promote trash, you know, <laughs> like there's a certain, there's a certain level of people, if people are going to trust what I say, I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, just try this. No, send it to me. I'll check it out. And if I like it, sure. And so what happens is like the do-rag that I wore in the Cisco yeah. video, I actually bought that from a black business here and they have these great do-rags. I love them. And it was great business. It was a great exchange and it worked out perfectly fine. And um, another thing that happens um, for legitimacy is um, people will, they'll either exchange things for you or they'll, um, give you, I had like a supplement company last year. I was really into fitness and doing the whole thing. So a supplement company reached out like, Hey, we'll give you $75 in our store, buy what you want, use it. And if you like it, then promo it. And we'll give you a percentage of what you sell. So it's more like a, a little more commission type based thing, but okay. it's cool too. It's like, you don't lose anything. It's very right. much like, right. so I, I was right. doing a couple of little workout videos, you know, plugging it there, take your shirt off, show a little crack. You know how it works out. <laughs> Get some clicks. <laughs> <laughs> the snacks not sell, they stop selling. <laughs> now, you did sell. say something. You said something <laughs> about um, you check out their website. Yes. Some people don't feel that websites are as important anymore because folks have social media. True. So, what is your talk take on that? Well, Instagram, Facebook, actually, most of the social media platforms have online stores in them. Right. Yeah, exactly. At least, at least have that set up. Uh, someone, they made bags. Well, number one, I was like, well, I don't wear bags like that. So it will be weird for me to promote it. I can't promote something that I don't actually, it's like be selling tampons. How does that work? Like I can't, right. because right. there's some right. people who are just like, you black, I'm black, promote my stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but it, you got to know your audience. You know, you got you to know my audience. My audience is 80% men because I checked the analytics. 80% men. 
of course. <laughs> and so go figure. <laughs> go figure. Um, so um, yeah, and I'm like, you got it. You have to. You have to check that out. So check their store out. Check their products out. Read the reviews because most comp- most good reputable businesses are going to have reviews. Right. And then sometimes you just got to say, can I sample your product? And if it's a good right. product, you you go for it. But honestly, you have to know how to sense BS. But I think if you're a consumer, you should have that down. Exactly. Especially if you've been in the game for a long time, you can see BS coming. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. How's something and going? We, and you're also a content creator, correct? Yes. Okay. Can you highlight yourself? Go ahead. This is your time to highlight yourself. Go okay. Care. Yes. As a content creator, that includes the dance videos. That includes my little comedy videos where I'm the therapist or I'm going over random situations. Um, all of this is on my Instagram. Instagram is my main hub um, for everything the world of Kevin. And that's why I call it the world of Kevin, because I feel like I'm a man of many hats. So that's comedy, dancing, positivity, joy, quotes, all that good stuff. And it's just a matter of bringing joy. Um, the same with the podcast. It's about self-development and just living the best life you can possibly live. And that's it in a nutshell. I love it, man. I love it. Good, good. I love it. Hey, Camila wants to know, how does she get you a waffle dog? Uh, listen, send me a link or something. I will, I will love one, especially on my cheat days. You the waffle dog. I I want one because listen, you will love it. I know I will. I love carbs. (laughs) 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 Listen, I'm cutting for summer. Listen, I let myself gain weight in winter, but I'm cutting for summer. But listen, I love a carb. Okay, I get it. I get it. (laughs) All right, Kevin, we got it. We got a question of the day. Question of the day. Let's go. This is for Kevin and the Village. Type your answers in the thread. Type your answers in the thread. Uh oh. If you could go on tour with one artist. Who would it be? I can answer that now, right? You can answer it now. Janet Jackson. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> that is my queen. Oh, yeah. That's my queen. Really? <laughs> yes. Janet Jackson is. And she reposted me. That's my queen. Janet reposted you? Yes. When I did the You Want This video. And that was confirmation for me because that was one of the first videos I did. And she reposted it. And I was like, okay, I see you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I would wow. go into a different I'll be out there oom um, bop bopping the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. Dana, who would who you got? Who you got? Um for business purposes, I would go on a roll. I would like to go out with I would go Master P. Ooh. Why? <laughs> I'm saying for business purposes. I, I mean I just like Master P. Okay. I, I think Master P, you know the coin is right. The coin is right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What I say, I would have never guessed that. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Master P. Ever. Hey, because he gonna ma- he gonna make some money, man, and he gonna show you how to make that money. Touche, touche. So we got a Mary J. Blige. All right, all right, Shanti. She wanna go and Mary J. Blige. I see that. Yolanda Wright Bozant said, "Leandria will be Ooh. singing, shouting, and cussing." I know that's right. Drink smoke in Newport. Drink it too. <laughs> Brown I get it. So Kevin got Janet. Dana got Master P. I would like to go out with Missy Elliott. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think Missy would be a good time. I think me and Missy would have so much fun. Plus, just being on tour with Missy, you know, each city she's going to bring somebody to the stage. Right. You know, I would have said Prince, but can't do that. You know, Camila said it would have been DMX. Mm. All right, DMX. Kyrie said, Ayala Van Zandt. I would love to know why <laughs> would you want to go out playing with Ayala Van Zandt. I'm not, not on my watch. Oh my not God. on my watch. Not on my That's watch. That's right. That's oh an interesting goodness. one, though. Do you want to go and just <laughs> sit? <laughs> Do you want to go and just sit in the room while she is oh my goodness. counseling people? Do you want... That is really interesting. That is crazy. Iyanla. Iyanla Van Zandt. I'm trying to see how would that even work. Because who would you do? Because nobody shares the stage with Iyanla ever. ever. Massage her feet. I mean, right. probably. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. But, beloved, okay. beloved, beloved. All right. I ain't yucking. Nobody's young. But yeah, I would, I would miss it. I think I would love to just be on stage with just Missy, just, just missing it. You know, yeah. period. All right. So, Kevin, yo. You were a phenomenal guest. Yes, I know that you were, man. Hard. 
you Thank know, you. you know, landing. Oh, hold on, we got a shot. A Anthony Bond says shot. A you would just be sitting there on a bar stool. And, and, hell, and, it, and it's like every 15 years because mama don't be out there like that. Yeah, I mean, I love Sean. I love right, me too. Bet Miller's every 20 years. Right. You be sitting there chilling. Right. You know, I, I love that. I, yeah, just be chilling. You know, you forget you on stage with Sade because you just vibing. Right. <laughs> and you better also do something. Right, right, right. <laughs> Kevin, what you want What you want to leave the folks with? I want to leave the folks with, listen, we are in a new year and Th- though things are rough, you can still choose happiness. Exactly. Do not allow the world around you to tell you how to feel. You can choose happiness. You can control your reactions. You can control everything that's within. And on top of that, you have everything you need already. I love it. That's it. I love it. Kevin Camila said, look out for her DM. We know you are bombarded I'm with ready. DMs on your IG, but look out, look out for. Um, just put waffle you know, dog. I got <laughs> yeah, hey batter batter. When hey batter batter hit your DM, respond. What's up, Keisha? What's up? What's up? What's up, Kevin? You are phenomenal. If you want, I would love to have you back on. I would love to be I on. Want, I want to tap into your your inspirational, motivational side. You know, y'all check out Kevin Kevin's website www.kevindwayne.com kevindwayne.com. Check for Kevin on IG. He has two Instagram pages. Kevin, what's your IG accounts? Yes, uh, the world of Kevin, which has everything, and then there's Kevin Dwayne Pod. But if you go to the world of Kevin Instagram, you will have access to everything. Everything I make it up. So everything about me is there, even the thirst traps for you nasty people. Yeah, just scroll down. Just keep <laughs> just scroll. scroll down. You'll see some yellow draws. You'll just yeah. Just keep scrolling. Keep it's scrolling. Like a, it's like a caution yeah. sign. It's a caution. Yeah. Sign. yeah. It's like a it's like a heaven or hell party. Yeah. And yeah, then, yeah, Kevin, yeah. When does when does the podcast air? The podcast is on. We just I just wrapped season. I guess that was three. Um. So the next season will probably come late summer. But you have two hundred episodes you can go through. So have fun. You got time. <laughs> Read the Bible in three months. <laughs> right. And are right, you still right. on YouTube? What's that? Are you on, still YouTube? on YouTube? No, YouTube makes you jump through too many hoops. I found um, that it's you can just put your videos right there in um TikTok and Instagram. I do have vintage stuff on 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 there too. The world of Kevin across the board. So you can go watch my old stuff when I was 22 and stupid. <laughs> And see the growth. <laughs> I'm thinking about doing like a series where I talk right. to my old self, like, what the hell was I thinking? Right. Just, just <laughs> see the growth. All right, Kevin. Hey, I love you, man. So be love safe out there in New York. I know that, you know, that was the hot spot at one point. Prayerfully, things have cooled down when it comes to the pandemic and you are getting your best life out there in the NY. And be on yeah. the lookout. I'm going to invite you back on to do a part two with the man, the myth, the legend, Kevin Dwayne. Can't wait. Thank you guys. <laughs> All right, buddy. <laughs> See ya. And go, Dana. Hey, since you scream it, go follow me on Instagram at DNA716. DNA716. Follow me. You understand what I'm saying? And before we get into this part, I'm going to say this real sexy and sensual. I'm going to say, you got to spread love. Instead of spreading lies. You got to spread love. Instead of spreading lies. Ooh, we. Hey. Oh, baby. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Ooh, Ooh, hey. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, listen. You know, me is hot. <laughs> he, oh, he's back. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, make sure you check on somebody, whether you think they're doing good or bad, uh, good or not. I'm sorry. Um, uh, suicide is real right now. Depression is still real. The pandemic is still on. People are getting vaccinated. People are still getting sick. People are currently sick. Check on your folks. Check on your people. Let them know you love them. Send them an email, text, card, letter, anything. Spread love. Spread it. We love y'all.
And I am Dante Morrison. I am the host. Please check me out on Instagram at Dante underscore Morrison. Dante underscore Morrison on the IG. Yo, TDS Village, we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Thank you so much for riding with us every single episode, every single time we go live. You are here. If you are not here, we just be two dudes having a conversation. Make sure to find us on YouTube, youtube.com backslash Dante Morrison. Like, subscribe, become a part of the village. We go live every Monday and Tuesday, 8 p.m. PM Pacific Standard Time. 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yo, make sure to check out the Dante Show also on Facebook. Just look out for us because once the streets open back up, you'll see me and Dana out there on the block doing what we can do to bring the community together and making sure that Black people know that we are Black all day, 365, 24-7. So until next week, please stay safe. Social distance, cover you, wrap your face up, wear your mask, wash your hands, do what you can do because we're still in a pandemic. We love y'all. Take care. God bless and peace out. Peace. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah,